In Japan, the tendency of the teacher is not to teach you by the spoken word. He will keep striking you in one place where your weakness lies. He will keep striking you. So eventually you learn the painful way, the hard way to stop that weakness. In Kendo, my weakness is my wrist, Kote. Eh? So the Kendo teacher just continually hits you, strikes you, and eventually you learn. You learn, okay, it's really painful. foreigners come and they want to do something, some modern discipline and the first time they're hurt or the first time they experience any pain they stop they won't continue and in Japan the important thing is to continue no matter how bad you are or how bad you feel you are, you continue if the teacher sees this spirit determination then you can really, he'll meet you halfway and you must come the other half and you can really advance but Westerners, are, yeah, Westerners uh, tend to be egotistical. In Kendo, if you get hurt, it's not so much your body that gets hurt, it's your ego. Yeah. Ego gets hurt, so the people stop. Yeah, they've been defeated, you know, they feel, I've been defeated. If you want to overcome others, you must first overcome yourself, your own weaknesses. <laughs> of kendo dictate that an attack may only be started with the right foot forward and attacks must be aimed at areas which are covered in armor the head shoulders chest or upper forearm none of which would have been a target in real fighting people beginners especially follow their instincts and raise their hands to protect their head which leaves the body open or they'll make their instinct will defeat them you have to overcome your instincts and stand there strongly but Kendo and Zen basically have the same, same purpose to, to destroy the ego. The atmosphere in a Kendo dojo has a powerful sense of controlled violence. The shouts are full of intensity. The fighting is fast and ruthless. The contestants are tuned to a high pitch. Their minds reach a special intensity, both calm and yet racing, alert to every tiny movement of their opponent. The Japanese call it Ichigo Ichie, which means every time is the last time. This is a real fight, you know, the last time. And you're serious and you're directly, you're not casual in any way. 
Your attitude must not be casual. No matter even if you've beaten the guy, you must still be alert and aware and have respect for your opponent. It's like a spring just waiting to go to see the opportunity of moving. If your opponent shows a weakness, take it quickly and seriously. No smiling, no laughing. It's not a laughing matter. <laughs> Les Denniston and the late Jim Elkin both had their philosophy of life changed by their contact with the Japanese fighting arts. They are not alone. Theirs is the common experience of serious students who are taught by masters of ability and integrity. At the heart of the old martial arts and the new sporting system is an ideal of self-control and a distaste for violence. Aggression is based on fear, basically frightened inside. And after a few years of training, it's quite hard now. You, you lose it. You don't need. I'm training every day in fighting. I don't need it anywhere else. Uh, I don't want to fight anyone. Only in the dojo. That's all. But before I was a nasty piece of work. 